Hello, I'm Ashley and welcome to my final review for the Barbican Young Reviewers. Now today, I'm off to see an exhibition called The Japanese House, which is the UK's first major exhibition showcasing Japanese architecture after the Second World War. Now, I know pretty next to nothing about architecture, so I'm pretty excited to see just what I'm going to learn. So let's go! So I've just come out from visiting the Japanese House Exhibition at the Barbican Art Gallery and now I'm going to head home to have a think about everything I've just experienced. So I'm home and I've had some time to think and now I'm going to get into everything I thought about the Japanese House. So as you entered the Barbican Art Gallery you could really see that it was a celebration of Japanese architecture and as you walked up the steps to the first part of the exhibition you were greeted with lots of different rooms each with pockets of information about life and architecture in Japan from 1945 all the way to the present decade. So each room featured either film installations, some photographs of different Japanese houses and some small replicas which was quite um, cool to see actually. So as I said before if a room had a film installation it actually was all blacked out, you could sit down in some places so it was really quite intimate and relaxing but then you would go to another room and you would um, be in one room for example that was bright yellow and in the middle was a mannequin which at first I thought was a person <laughs> so I had to do a quick double take because the mannequin had uh, a jacket filled with Japanese newspaper articles and that was really interesting because it meant that things were kept visually, visually engaging for you even though you were kind of taking in lots of information it didn't feel like it was you were overloaded which was quite nice. So as you were actually walking around the exhibition you were kind of teased because right slap bang in the middle was a life-size replica of an all-white Japanese house called the Moriyama House. Now this was designed by a Japanese designer called Rubye Nishiwaza for a urban hermit called Yasuo Moriyama. Now Moriyama's house was absolutely brilliant. It had 10 different rooms featuring a vast array of different things, whether it be his record collection, his kitchen utensils, and a great addition was as you walked out of the house, you got a chance to see um, big trees and really kind of be embracing nature as well. So that was quite nice. One of my favorite parts of it was the fact that it had an outdoor cinema where everyone got a chance to just sit down, relax and watch some Japanese movies. Now who wouldn't want an outdoor cinema in their garden? I know I definitely would. And it was quite unique because it meant that all the things you learned about along the way in the exhibition, you got to see come to life. And I think that was quite a really nice touch. So if I was to quickly summarize the top three things I learned from the Japanese house exhibition. Number one, I would say I learned about the evolution of Japanese architecture. So after the second world war, 4.2 million homes across Japan were lost. So it meant that Japan had to lay down new foundations and new traditions, which meant that there was a real conversation going on between tradition and modernity and what would happen to Japanese homes in this new era. Second thing I learned about, which was that houses can speak. <laughs> now stick with me on this one. Um, I never really had a chance to kind of think about a house on a deeper level. It got me thinking about how throughout times of change, homes can actually speak to what is going on at the time. And thirdly, I learned that it was good to try something new. Now, I know that if I wasn't um, a Barbican Young Review, I may not have had the opportunity to kind of go on and see this exhibition. And that would have been a great shame. It will always be a advantage for you to open your mind up and learn about different things about art. So I just want to say thanks to the Barbican and thank you guys for watching my last review. And be sure to catch our last Barbican Young Reviewer next week Monday.